like when this beef yeah. and you don't understand like you like say you walk in the street and you see somebody and they're talking shit yeah. well you don't know if they're talking shit but then they say something and you say what and they go say <laughs> and you go what say you <laughs> anybody else say you are you so you think you think they may be mad, but maybe yeah. not. Maybe yeah. they tell you, they tell you, go right, go this way, it's safe. Yeah. <laughs> you have a good day, but yeah. you never know. Right? Yeah, maybe they're saying, I like your shoes. And, yeah. I, and yeah. they were saying, I like your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I like your shoes. <laughs> we wish everybody speak one language or everybody yeah. fight. Everybody fight and like this, oh, Harry, what, what uh, will be a good idea? I think we should all have one language. Yeah. This way, there's no fights. We understand, we all understand each other, you know. I think I wish I spoke all languages. <laughs> Not everybody speak one. Yeah, yeah. I speak all. That's good. If I really, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're out here at the world's famous Devon House Bakery. Is it me? Right. I know. I gotta do a look a tour thing. And when we do the tour, I can get some ice cream, some patty, and some coconut water. You see me? Everything crisp, everything fresh, everything iry. Big up on yourself. Big man thing this, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay. When we talk about Devon House, it reminds you of the first black Jamaican millionaire. Yeah. Because Devon House was built in 1881, and it was built by the first black Jamaican to become a millionaire. He acquired his wealth through gold mining in Venezuela. Yep. Okay. Later return where he bought 99 properties. From the 99, erected Devon House at the cost of 10,000 pounds. The family lived there up until 1923, and then it was sold to a family called the Melhado, who then sold it to the Lindos. Now say the house is about to demolish. Um, because we have no investors who wanted to purchase. But then the Honorable Edward Sago, who was then Minister of Development at that time, he heard. And what he did was to place a stop order of preservation. Okay. And we have refurbished it back to its former glory. What I've just given to you was just an icing on the cake because there's more depths to the story and all of them something there. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, so we can't record inside, but we're going to take a tour We'll get some photos just so people can see kind of like what it looks like. Um, and hopefully you guys, when you do come to visit Jamaica, you guys make a stop here at Devon House and come check out the mansion. All right, guys, we just wrapped up the tour at Devon House Bakery. We got to see the souvenir shop. We got to see the ice cream shop. We got to see everything. They gave us a tour of the mansion. I've never actually been in the mansion before. Really cool place. Um, learned a lot about the history and what went on, how the Germans came by and then the Spaniards and the British and everything. So it was a really cool experience. We couldn't take video inside, but they allowed us to take some pictures. So we did the best that we can with that. Um, a shout out to the tour guide, Barbara, man. She was amazing. She held it down, broke down everything, walked us around, and gave us a grand tour of everything. So thank you guys for hosting us. And now we continue the journey of Jamaica, baby. Everything I read. Right? It's rated number one in Jamaica, the ice cream, and it's fourth in the world. So our ice cream has like natural flavor. Like you have grape nut, you have rum and raisin, you have um, pistachio, you have coconut, you have cookie and cream and chocolate, um, um, cheese, cheesecake, ice cream, all of those something. All right, so we got the ice cream, mission complete. Devon House ice cream, not ice cream, ice cream. This is the Devon style flavor, one of their more popular ones, so definitely had to get this. Um, 
The guy's got a bunch of different crazy stuff as well. A little bit of red tape over here. It was a little difficult to get the cameras inside, so we didn't want to violate any, any rules and get anybody upset. So we do what we can. We're gonna have some ice cream, chill out, and then we're gonna get ready for some training, our first day training out here in Jamaica on this trip. So I'm excited for the boys to get to see some of the work with these other guys and get to work with some different athletes from different parts of the world. Enjoy your ice cream, baby. Got to the gym, ruthless MMA. See how this goes. Stretching right now, getting ready. Trying to loosen up the body a little bit for some grappling. Maybe some striking a little bit later. We're at Ruthless MMA. It's a nice little facility, nice little spot they got here. So, oh, this is my first time coming here. There's a lot of strength, a lot of like muscle. It's raw. It needs to be tightened up and honed. You know, skill levels very different. Skill levels. Night and day. Definitely better in the States. Higher IQ in terms of like strategy and all that. But again, this comes down to opportunity, resources, coaches, and game planning, getting chances to compete and gaining experience. There's a lot that goes into it. Tired. <laughs> Training camp starts today. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not today. What are you looking at? Huh? What are you looking at, huh? Huh? Oh, get him. <laughs> come to this gym and just like train for guys. Bro, it means the world, man. You can see the guys' faces like that. The kind of enthusiasm. It's always a. It's about possibilities, you know. It's about showing people what's possible, and and it's about support. It's like it's it puts more of us in that organization, in that international space. It feels like we're there now, like we're more a part of that experience, just by saying, "I know that guy. I trained with that guy." Like it, it means the world, man. And then of course the knowledge that these guys are gonna learn, and you know you hear about the rub. And like, you know, that, just that little knowledge that rubs off when you roll with somebody and you, you roll with that higher caliber of athlete and the skills that you, you, you kind of, even inadvertently, like, just pick up. It really is incredible. I think it means the world to these guys, man.